For the past year, many Syrians have been forced to flee their home. Conflicts here are aggravating every day, and we need to find a solution to this. Today, we're here at an unofficial general settlement near Mavrak, Jordan, in the Syrian desert. Most of these refugees are Syrians that had to flee their the Syrian war, seeking for safety. The majority of them are children. Some of them were born here and don't know of another life outside these camps. They had to grow up faster than they were supposed to, trying to help their families and taking care of them. Conditions here are wretched. Refugees live in a daily grain full of dust with a huge lack of food. Kids need special counseling, which can sometimes be a big challenge. They've lost their parents, lived a high level of violence, and their childhood has been ruined. Khaled, a 13-year-old boy, tells us about his situation today. Here a couple months ago, my mother died and my dad is still out there working as much as he can to provide us some food. We all miss both of them. Now I'm the one taking care of my siblings. Hala, the youngest one, is a special counseling. We are all just trying to help each other. Here is barely enough to get daily food. Temperatures are still really high, but winter is approaching and the cold will come really soon. These families are in need and they're only asking for help. They're just asking to not be forgotten. UNHCR is trying to find a solution to end with these conflicts. But for now, we all have to, put, to pull together as an international community to help them. Could you introduce yourself? My name is Taylor Fox. I'm a BBC reporter. What can you tell us about Thadari refugee camp in Jordan? Thadari is a refugee camp um, opened in July 28, 2012 for Syrians fleeing uh, the violence in, uh, in the ongoing Syrian civil war. The living conditions in the camp are awful not because the disinterest or uh, the incompetence but because of an uh, inability to host so many refugees. The camp host actually uh, more than 83,000 uh, refugees all of them from Syria and they have a um, very small daily ration, uh, daily, um, food, daily food rations and they have uh, to share their tents with other families which is <clears throat> pretty uncomfortable for all of them because they are all gathered in small tents most of the ham families have lost at least one member of, this fa of his family and lots of refugees mm, arrived with psychological or physical damage. I had the opportunity to ask um, many refugees about their opinion and some of them thank to God for this opportunity but others um, complained about the living conditions. Have you met Angelina Jolie? Yes, in fact, I had the opportunity to meet her, and you know, she give she gave me a very critical opinion about the situation. If you think about it, the fact that there are more and more uh, refugees tell us much about the security of our world. 
what Angelina Jolie wants is to bring the nations together in order to stop the conflict and send, send help to the victims and to the refugees. Her visit was very encouraging for all of us, not only for the refugees but also for me, because she gave them a new hope, you know. She, she, she made them forget all the martyrdom they must live each day. In conclusion, the situation of the Syrian conflict and the refugees will never stop, will never stop until the nations agree and gather in order to end the conflict and send their help. Movie star Angelina Jolie, special envoy for the UN's refugee agency, has been occupied lately, and not only by her divorce. She's been going to Dadaab, the largest refugee camp in the world. Dadaab is placed in Kenya and is so large that it could even be one of Kenya's biggest cities. It was set 24 years ago. There are about 300,000 inhabitants in there, but they are not normal people. are not here by choice but because they had nowhere else to go. They had no other options so they had to stay here at the camp. They are men, women and evil children who have fled famine and war. They are refugees. The dab is placed in the desert. That means that it's constantly battered by winds which can even occasionally lead to a dust storm. The refugee camp can be divided in two. The older parts where you can find uh, shops and hospitals and then the newer parts in which the families live under tents in patches of desert. The food in the camp is scarce, leading to the death of many children, which parents can't afford to pay anything else. Alaia is a woman who came from Somalia with her kids, leaving her husband behind. Before coming here, we knew that the living conditions were not the best ones. Still, we surely did not expect this. There is little room for me and my kids in the tent, and it's a rare day the one we can go through with enough food in our stomachs. After facing this, my husband decided to go back to our farmlands and try to send us the little money he could make by staying there. Unfortunately, he can barely sustain us both, and there's days where he doesn't need anything, just so, just so he can support our kid life. Plus, he's jeopardizing his life by staying there and I keep telling him to come back, that our children miss him, but he states that their, li that their safety comes first. Alaia's family is lucky enough to have some more income than the rest do, but it's not the same for all the families that live in here. You see, some families have excellent support, which helps them go through the days. Others depend fully on funds and the Kenyan government. Although some people speculate about her real intentions, Angelina Jolie's visit has been key to open the eyes to the world. She's aware that people follow her every movement and copy her every action, so she hopes that this will raise the future help refugees will receive. She knows that the images shown of starving little kids will cause an impact in this society, and it will lead to people sympathizing with these poor families. She wants a reaction from the world. She wants things to change. Refugees also say that they are being forgotten. They say that they are the world's dirty little secret. They ask everybody, not only the powerful people of the world, but the normal people like us, to send aid, to help them survive, to understand them, and especially not to forget them. We are in the camp of refugees of Calas, where Angelina Jolie has been the last week. Esther Schroeder has most than 66,000 registered every strand refugees, 
the first arrived in 1968 during the early years of Eritrea's War of Independence against Ethiopia. 1,800 people crossed into Sudan every month. It is the most large standing refuge situation in Africa. There is a still procreated. Thousands of refugees live in the gym conditions camp, lacking food security or prepared health, and sharing self research with Sudanese nationals. On arrival at Shagarab camp, in Kasala, they are not immediately provided with proper shelter. Only when their refugee statute is confirmed, they are able to move in a tent or hurt. The United Nations Food Program supplies the camp with food aid, but the refugees say there is not enough. Education opportunity for the children are so are also inadequate because the school lacking the capacity to observe them. We have talked with some refugees, with for example Allah. He left his country because to a civil war. As his house had been destroyed by an arch threat, he decided to flee with his wife and two kids. He hoped to be able to get a job. They feel approached and wounded and powerless. Hazan is a young boy Syrian. He is 12 years old. Her mother died in an air strike and his father missing. He decided to flee with his sister. He hoped that the war ends soon. They feel hopeless and traumatized. The mission of Angelina Jolie is to hope the people in the name of the United Nations. She fit for the war and sun, for improve the living condition and education, and for put in on this situation. But we ask, what is the solution of this problem? Our time will be defined not by decreasing themselves, but by the way we pull together as an international community to address them. Angelina Jolie has visited the refugee camp of Sao Kaba in the province of Haja in the northwest of Yemen. 400 families live in this camp as a result of the Yemen war. The most of them have suffered two horrible tragedies. The first is the war that has forced them to flee their homes and resettle in the Mathrad camp near to the city of Harad. The second one is the bombardment of the refugee camp of Mathrad by the Saudi Arabian army. They have been forced to escape again and build a new camp, this time in the desert, where life is very hard by the shortage of water and other basic resources. These refugees used to live in the region of Sada, where it is one of the biggest cities in Yemen. Sada is also one of the poorest regions in the poorest country of Arabia. Angelina Jolie talked with these refugees. Some of them are traumatized and feel that the war has forgotten them. Halal and his family have left Sada because life was too dangerous there. The gunfires in the street were constant, and sniper also shoot the inhabitants. The bombardments converted the town in an absolute hell. Each bombing missed dozens of victims, some of them people that I know. A Saudi blockade has provoked an extreme shortage in all the country, making tens of thousands of dead by famine and lack of medicines. Daily life in the camp is really hard. We constantly run out of food, health products, medicine or any other material that we need. We survive as we can, but we are in a plight and increasingly desesperated. Dero and Sylvia are brothers. We go every day to a water wheel to feed drinkable in jerry cans and it's a long way. 
I wish to go back in home, like before the war. Tents are very cold the nights and very hot the days. I want to see my friends again. My hope is make enough money to pay a voyage across the Red Sea to the smugglers. Find a place where make a new life. The Angelina Jolie's visit as special envoy of the UN next year serves to attract the world's attention of the great humanitarian crisis that Yemeni population suffered since last 20 months and becomes worse every day. The UNHCR searched a way to provide supplies to these refugees or help them to flee Yemen and get shelter in a safe country despite the blockade. The Yemen war continues and will continue destroying people's lives and making new victims. To protect and help these refugees is essential but not a real solution. To find and end the underlying problems can be a very hard and dangerous task, but is the only way to evade more humanitarian crisis in the future. The Syrian war began in March 2011. As a result, more than 13 million Syrian people were forced to flee their hometowns. Of those 13 million people, 7.6 were displaced within Syria, but neighboring countries such as Turkey or Jordan now host over 5 million Syrians. On one hand, some Syrian prefer, people prefer not to go to Europe and to stay in the region because of financial costs, but also so they can go back to their homes as soon as it's safe enough. On the other hand, many other Syrians seeking security and peace decide to go to Europe. Once here, they live in camps such as Calais Jango, refugee camp located next to the port of Calais and near the 31 mile Channel Tunnel. This camp officially hosts over 7,000 migrants from Africa, Afghanistan and Syria. In early 2016, this camp was already halved in area, but yesterday the final pull-down started. Even though 2,000 migrants left voluntarily on Monday and the operation has been largely peaceful so far, some migrants will refuse to give up their attempts to cross to the UK. Consequently, the French government has deployed 1,200 gendarmes. Early today, we, ha we had the chance to speak to one of the migrants from this camp. Mazen Mala fled his country, Syria, due to political persecution. Mazen left the camp only day today with other 600 refugees on their way to other French camps. He described his life in the camp and the undeniable harsh living conditions. We were shocked by his words. He said, I'm leaving Calais and I'm never coming back. He said that the camp is like a forgotten place. Everyone there is dirty, cold and frustrated. That it was exhausting being there. The toilets were unusable and every morning people fight for to take a shower. All in all, he said that it was bad enough in the summer. He can't imagine what it would be in the winter. Despite all the chaos and bad news, the sun is beginning to shine. To shine. For some of the kids of Calais Jumbo, Monday morning, the United Nations sent their sporting envoy Angelina Jolie to help the French authorities during the dismantling of the camp. The actress is known for, for her multinational skills to achieve the United Nations goal, which is to help the people who need it. She has visited many camps in Turkey, Jordan, Lebanon and Malta. We could say that the actress is very into it. Angelina Jolie herself has adopted three children orphaned by the Syrian war. She arrived from New York by private jet and went to the camp surrounded by French police since she is a public personality. Her arrival has caused even more chaos. However, her mission is to help the migrants of the camp and so far she's doing it. She has reached an agreement with the Home Secretary of the UK, Amber Rood, and the country has already taken 2,000 children, most of them girls and under 13. The dismantling of the camp is so far successfully achieved, and Mazimala is, Mazimala is now looking forward to a better life far away from his nightmare from Calais Django, and Angelina Jolie will fight for the rights of the migrants until her departure on Sunday. Tuesday, October 20, 25th, from Calais for BBC News, Bosque de Enrique. Nearly six years since the beginning of the civil war in Syria, 
200 Syrians try to cross every day the border to escape the bombs and violence in the country. Millions of people forced to flee their homes and their lives. Millions of people who live hopeless, wretched and traumatized. A situation that leaves wretched stories like Dunia with only 18 years old. من هيك طلعنا من سوريا شنو بشنو الطيارات كذا من فوقنا ومن بيوتنا هزمنا وشي من هالشي هذا كنا عايشين عيشة زينة وجانا الضرب وحرب وهي كذا آخر شي حكمنا نسكر على حالنا بالبيوت ونقعد ونسكت ما نقدر نطلع برا حالا نحن يعني نتمنى إنه نرجع على بس يعني إن شاء الله بيمشي الحال ونرجع لسوريا ما أنا مبين يعني والله ما بعرف على اصدقائنا نتعرف من بنقعد عندهم هون مثل من من النهار بنقعد الصبح قدام البيت وخلاص خلاص انا وبي كمان اثنين اثنين اخواتي كمان ما بيحسنوا يمشي ما بيحسنوا يمشوا وكم معاناه يعني كل شيء يعني كل شيء بد كم يعني مو مليح نحن عم عم نعانيهم المخيم يعني Many of them have decided to take refuge in the Thatari camp 10 kilometers from the Jordanian city of Mafraq. It opened in 2012 to host Syrians flying the war. It is currently the second largest camp in the war, with a total area of 5 square kilometers of scrap and sand. Actually, there are more than 675,000 Syrian refugees registered in Jordan, a figure that increases every day. Here, in the Tatari refugee camp, thousands of Syrian refugees live in deplorable conditions. More than half are children. They are forced to live in a place where the disease, the violence, the lack of hygiene and the dust are the daily bread. Last week, the special envoy of the UNHCR and the famous Hollywood actress Angelina Jolie visited the Thatari refugee camp. The UN ambassador has asked once again to incite the international leaders to seek and end the Syrian war. So my message to world leaders is that as they prepare to gather at the UN General Assembly in 10 days, to ask the fundamental question of what are the root causes of the Syria conflict and what will it take to end it? And please put that at the center of your discussions. The time passes and this enormous humanitarian crisis continues to increase. Every day thousands of people are victims of a conflict they have no part in. Every day, thousands of children are traumatized for the rest of their lives. Children who have lost their childhood. Children who believe that war is the only way of life. Good morning, my name is Lolita Letham. I speak from Zatar, a Syrian refugee camp. This camp is located in Jordan and this is the second largest camp in the world. Currently, it is a host 80,000 Syrians. Those people have been forced to flee by the persistence of war, despite the country's efforts and collaboration of NGOs and volunteers, living conditions are, are precarious, ostentous and scalded. An example of this would be the lack of drinking water, hygiene and education. Humanitarian and economic aid are not enough. Some person, some parents are forced to work illegally and in poor condition. Now I want to introduce you a Syrian refugee, Jamal. Hi, I'm Jamal. I came here 
with my seven children three years ago. The living condition I heard, but despite churches of food and water, I feel lucky. My seven children are with me and my and I have a new job in the camp. But not everyone has my lucky. Many mothers still looking for their children and many refugees die from poor condition. Thank you, Jamal. This refugee camp recently recently received the visit of the actress and UNHCR ambassador Angelina Jolie. During his stay here, she spoke with many families and she collaborated with some of the locks. Ambassador help is crucial for Syrians. Since the tree she tried to change things, will have to politics and medias. Thank you. And I would like to communicate you everyone, these people, the Syrians, are suffering and they need your help. Please help Syrians. My name is Luke Mai and today I'm going to talk to you about the RCNS. The RCNS is the refuge camp in north of Syria and is located next to Alep. The living conditions there are horrific since there is too many dust, too many uh, rubbish laying in the floor and there is only one drinking water well in an area of 10 km square. We could say that is uh, an affront to human dignity. The number of people reaches the 65,000 people and it's overcrowded since the maximum capacity should be around the 60,000 uh, 60, people. Uh, the immigrants came from few countries, especially from Turkey, Syria, Iraq, or even Jordan. <coughs> we met uh, a man whose name was uh, Muhammad Ali and he told us that he flew away his house because uh, his father died in a nest strike and now he's the father of three childs and he found a job next to the camp and he wins ten dollars per day and he has a hope and that hope is that once he will have enough money he will leave away uh, the camp and he will go to England where he will might be have a better life uh, speaking to uh, other refugees uh, we knew that Angela Jolie uh, came to the camp uh, several weeks before us and uh, they told us that she that her objective objective was to uh, draw attention to the international community in order to express solidarity uh, towards Syrian refugees and host countries that have kept their their borders open so since now the authorities are going to make an effort to improve refugees living conditions Hi, I'm Jaime from BBC News. We are here in the jungle, Calais, France. This camp has shower, electricity and toilets. The immigrants also have one hot meal per day, but without proper accommodations. The food is supplied by charity kitchens. Here in the jungle there are 8,143 immigrants. They are, from, they are Iraqi, Sudan, from Horn of Africa, Syria, etc. They have an European origin. We have some testimonies from an Iraqi mother that she say that her young daughter be ripped from her family by army men. We also have the testimony from Allah, an orphan child from Lebanon. He is 11 years old and feeds his family. His mother died in an airstrike and his father is missing. To stop that things, we have to do like Angelina Jolie. She is helping the refugee camps. She, to do that, she visited camps in Turkey, Malta, Syria, Iraq, etc. Her mission is help the refugees. To do that, uh, the United Nations had to help them. The, they have to prevent the conflicts and end the conflicts. 
they have to find diplomatic solution, bring countries together and save lives. In conclusion, in the jungle, the living conditions are better than in other refugee camps because they have electricity, toilets and shower. But it continues to be a refugee camp and to stop that, the United Nations have to prevent the conflicts and end the other conflicts. Bye from here, from the jungle.